You know, this weekend had so, some big, big news. Mm -hmm. um, Intel and Micron got together, and they've been working on a new technology, a memory technology. Actually, it goes beyond a memory technology. It's a new type of architecture that they <laughs> use for memory that they're calling 3D Crosspoint. Uh, and by all looks, it's going to change the way that we think about computers. By, by a huge margin, right? By a yeah. huge <laughs> margin. And, you know, there are a lot of advancements that are just, well, okay, it's faster, right? Faster yeah. CPU, faster memory. This is going to blur the lines between system memory and storage memory. Now, when we talk about system memory and storage memory, it's because we've traditionally had something that's kind of slow-ish, mm -hmm. like a hard drive or SSD or maybe even a, you know, a, a RAM drive that stores programs, it stores data. It's right. non-volatile, so it'll right. stay there when the computer turns off. And then you have the volatile memory, which is ultra, ultra fast, which is sort of like the brain space for the CPU. It, when it needs to do calculations, that's where it does and it. And that would be the RAM. That would be the RAM. Well, this 3D cross point is a thousand times faster than, uh, than even an SSD, which already is ridiculously so much faster than a hard drive. It lasts far longer, a thousand times longer than what we would use in an SSD, which, is, which would be NAND flash. Mm -hmm. And it also happens to be 10 times more dense than DRAM system memory. Wow. Yeah. So when do we get to play with it then? Uh, that, well, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. so, well, normally when we hear about things like this, it's like, yeah. oh, when, when in, they in get a, the manufacturing right. process done in 10 years. That's and, what I was going to say. In about 10 years, we should see this in your computer. It, yeah. They have already created it. And they're going to be giving out samples to manufacturers this year. And they said we should start to see wide availability 2016, probably mid-year or so. Ah, that's exciting. But then also I realized that my computer already is having issues keeping up with SSD technology. So I'm guessing motherboards and it's gonna, PCI Express is, well, well, that's is the that thing. the way that, to go? That, that's the thing. That's, that's why it's going to redefine how we think about computers. Because it's not just another component we plug in. This is not just a faster hard drive. <laughs> this is going to change the way we create computers. I, I think what we should probably do is talk hmm. a little bit about the technology first. Alex, if you could go ahead and bring up that slide. So this is what it looks like. This is why they call it Crosspoint. So if you look at it, they, they call it Crosspoint because those little wires look like an X when you view them from, from above. That makes sense. Now, again, this is more dense than DRAM. It's far more robust than NAND flash, and it's faster than NAND flash. The reason why is because of how they, they created it. Let's talk a little bit about the technology, and, and keep this up so that we can actually refer to the picture. Now, it's a grid of parallel and, and perpendicular wires. See how you have wires going one direction on the top, and then down below, they go in the other direction? Right. Now, that's how you address those columns. That column is the memory space. So that's either a one or a zero, right? Okay. So in one state, it's, it's on, Ooh. one state, it's off. Right. Okay. Now, in the old way of addressing memory, you would have, uh, if it was a flash, so, so one of these things, NAND flash, right. you would have a transistor that could detect the state of charge inside of a, essentially a capacitor. And that would be the one or zero? The one or zero. There's a charge there, it's a one, there's no charge there, there's a zero. Right. That transistor was also responsible for forcing charge into there or removing it hmm. if you wanted to switch states. Which then over time it degrades, right? Right, that's why SSDs die, because over time that, that insulation will start to wear down and the cell will no longer be able to hold the charge and it can't tell if it's a one or a zero. Right, right? but this doesn't have that there, issue. There is no capacitor here. This material it's a phase change material, and you actually change the nature of the material rather than making it hold a charge. That's pretty cool. It's so trippy. Uh, but the other cool thing about this is there's no transistor. Notice how there's, there's, there's no device that checks state. You address it just by addressing the wire that's on the top and the bottom. And because it's in this cross pattern, it's, it's a unique, it's always unique. The one if you get two wires, it will always address just one cell. That is pretty awesome. Right. So wow. that's the cross, that's why it's called a cross point. That's the cross point array structure. <laughs> also, you've got that transistor thing, which I just talked about, which, right. which means first, it's going to wear less. Second, you're going to be able to compact it a whole lot more because you don't have that extra component per memory cell. <laughs> and third, it also means, well, you're just going to go. <laughs> I can see why you're excited I'm about really this. Excited. I mean, you're a pretty big SSD guy to begin with, yeah. but uh, this seems like a whole new leap. It, it is and a whole new leap. And also, because, because it's got such a long life and because it is so, so fast, it's still slower than, than system memory, by mm -hmm. the way, DRAM. Okay? It's, it's not as fast. 
but it is so much faster than SSDs that people are already talking about what they could do with it. Right. It could be a cache for your SSD because your SSD is so slow. <laughs> so but a hybrid drive? A hybrid drive. SSD memory? Oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but it's more than just bigger, faster. They're going to have to rethink of the way that they create computers because you can't just plug this into SATA. SATA is already saturated by SSDs. We've already topped out how fast we can get on SATA yeah. with this, 550 megabytes per second. You can't, that's, that's it. That's Which is fast. It's fast, but right. like this will do 1,400 and 1,000, oh. which is so much faster. That's why I love the Predator. Oh, it's on yeah. the PCIe bus. But this cross-point technology is way, way faster than you can get even with the next next revision of PCIe. PCIe 4, mm -hmm. which by the way, we're only on PCIe 2 right now, we're starting to move into 3, Jeez. can do about 30, uh, just just under 32 gigabytes per second. Wow, that's okay. still pretty dang fast. It's pretty dang fast. It's nowhere near what I can pull with the cross-point memory though. So we don't have a bus that currently exists to you take advantage of this. To take advantage of this. So, wow. so you know, we're already talking about. Well, does this mean that they're going to integrate it with the CPU die? Is this going to become like the new L3 cache? Oh. Um, huh. uh, or uh, I heard a very intriguing idea over the last couple of days of people saying, "Do you just start making die on chip? You give this direct access to the CPU by putting it on the same piece of silicon." Hmm. Uh, so yeah, it's. I'm so excited. Uh, something like this hasn't happened in a generation. We've been using the same architecture since I was first building computers. Wow. Uh, you know, slightly faster, right. but this is completely different. This is gonna, this is gonna change the way we, we build. So I wonder too if you could just, uh, instead of using DRAM at all, just use so some of the, it's not as fast, but yeah, that, just like have one one bank of memory dedicated to all that. Yeah, that's the thing. So there are going to be certain applications where you don't need the super fast DRAM, or maybe yeah. you need a small bit of DRAM. Yeah. But most of the computing can be done. It would be called computing in place. In other words, the the place where you store the data. That's also the place where the CPU does all its calculations. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, which, and, and now this is this is the freaky part. Which means you're not only changing the hardware now. You need to change the software. Operating systems will need to be changed. <laughs> To take advantage of that advance, but I just got Windows 10. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, I, I don't know how the industry is going to react. That's I want to cool. see some hmm. really freaky implementations of this. I want to see data center applications yeah. that are using blocks and blocks of this stuff to give us super fast I/O. Uh, now there are a couple of things that uh, that we still need to figure out. We don't know how expensive it's going to be. Hmm. Uh, and that means we don't know the yields. And is it just Intel that has this technology? It's, it's Intel Micron, uh, so it's a partnership. But hmm. of course, Intel Micron, they don't make products. They make products that other companies will use. Uh, like, they don't sell directly to us. That's not their, not their game. Right. Uh, but we need to figure out what kind of yields they're going to get. Because um, I'm thinking that pro it's probably going to be pretty good because they're removing transistors. Anytime you remove complexity from the silicon, right. Uh, it's going to be good. You yeah, it's going to be cheaper. It's going to be a little bit cheaper. So if they, if this, if the price point on this is lower than Ooh. what you can make like NAND flash for, I don't. NAND flash doesn't survive. <laughs>